Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. Oh, it's not Tokyo, it's, uh, I'm gonna try again. Greetings from Los Angeles, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very, very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. Once again, I must apologize for my, my current situation. Once again, I'm still in a hotel and uh, here in uh, California after having just arrived a couple days ago. And while I'm still trying to find my bearings and while I'm still trying to make preparations for settling in here on a rather long-term basis and uh, with the, uh, the plans of my, the rest of my family coming to the area in a few days time, uh, with all that being said, I still had the great opportunity and great, great fortune to have over the past uh, couple days gone to a couple or a few stores where I was able to make some purchases of physical media of certain titles. And so I was very, very excited uh, to do that because that's one of the things, one of the many things that uh, is uh, one of the many things that's uh, very exciting for me about this move, this new chapter in my life is the ability to, again, uh, get reacquainted with cinema to uh, see how uh, directly how the stores have uh, various titles on display and uh, to actually uh, go and browse the shelves uh, which is somewhat difficult for me uh, while I was in Japan in terms of say uh, North American labels or British labels or uh, other European labels etc. So uh, that has provided such a wonderful uh, chance and when I arrived here, I had to go as soon as possible to a number of stores. So I went to, just to give you a heads up, I went to two Barnes & Noble stores. One, it's very, very close. You can, actually, it's outside of this window. You can't see it now because of the, the curtains are drawn and it's dark outside. But uh, if there is sunlight, then one could see that there's actually Barnes & Noble just uh, visible from this window. So that was a bit of uh, good fortune. So I went to that Barnes & Noble and uh, with a car that I'm currently renting, a rental car, I drove about, about I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes from here to another Barnes & Noble. So I was uh, very fortunate to have been able to visit two Barnes & Nobles over the past uh, couple days. And so let me share with you what I was able to get there. And also in, in respect of that, I was able to meet a number of people and I want to ex extend my uh, deepest thanks and appreciation uh, for, uh, for uh, the, uh, the people that I've met so, uh, so far. So thank you so much for this. And also for the lovely messages that people have been sh giving to me uh, through Instagram, through uh, Facebook, through uh, a direct message, DM, through the YouTube comments. And thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. I must, once again, sincerely and deeply and uh, profoundly apologize for my lack of uh, responding immediately. I hope you can understand it's, it's been a bit of a overwhelming experience just to make this move and uh, somewhat exhausting on the one hand. Uh, and also it's a little bit tough to find my rhythm in terms of addressing uh, and uh, bringing my energies towards the, uh, say, uh, trying to uh, uh, make these, um, or trying to address uh, these responses in a way that I think uh, I've tried to do in the past. So I apologize for that very much. Again, I'm just uh, not in my element as, as the saying goes. And so I hope you can understand and I hope you can forgive me, but please note that I have been reading all of the comments and uh, the direct messages and I'm trying my best to respond where I can but uh, where I haven't once again I deeply apologize but uh, please note that I have been reading them so I want to say thank you thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart for your lovely uh, kind kindness and support and friendship and people have been giving suggestions as to where to go and uh, movie theaters and other places that's been fantastic so absolutely fantastic so um, let me then uh, first speak to the Criterion titles that I was able to get. And uh, I posted a video, I think, uh, earlier today, where I went to, as I said, I went to two Barnes & Nobles. So uh, of the two, I posted a video on one of them, which is a little bit farther out. I didn't post a video about the earlier one, but let me share with you 
what I got in terms of those Barnes and Noble visits. And so with respect to the Barnes and Noble, the, the one that was farther out and the one I posted a video on, so as some of you may know, I already posted a video where I went to that Barnes and Noble and I was able to find the 4K UHD plus Blu-ray combo edition of After Hours. This is a spine number 1185, I think. Yes, 1185. And so uh, this is one that I think is a very hot item in the context of Criterion physical media releases. So, uh, that was uh, from one of the Barnes & Noble stores. So very excited about that. And you can actually maybe see uh, in the corner of the video here, the screen here, that uh, there are some others now. I went to one Barnes & Noble, found After Hours, and then I, I had already gone to another Barnes & Noble, the one closer to this hotel. And I got a number of titles here. So let me just first explain or show what it was I was able to find at that closer Barnes & Noble. So you can see here the recent re-release of 4K UHD plus Blu-ray combo edition of uh, Jean-Luc Godard's Breathless right here. And this is in the digipack format, so very interesting, complete with the seal. So that's the first one. And then I was able to get this one too, the Blu-ray, uh, The Servant 1182. Uh, this is uh, Joseph Losi's work, The Servant, so very excited about that one. And then also was able to get this one, which is Medicine for Melancholy. It's also the Blu-ray edition, 1183. Uh, so uh, this is also very excited, Barry Jenkins. So uh, very excited about that. And also this work, Watermelon Woman, uh, 1184. So uh, very excited about that. Really, really great. So these were the titles that, the new titles, the new releases that I was not able to get uh, while I was in Japan, or I had uh, refrained from getting because I was anticipating the move. So I was able to find most of what I was looking for in terms of the, uh, the purchases. Now, I was not able, as of now, to find the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the, um, uh, the Western set, so um, the Bedeker uh, Western set. So I, I will try to find uh, some time between now and the end of the sale to find that, but if not, I'll order it online. Uh, but there's that. Now, I must say next, with regard to this next one, that I have to thank my dear friend, our dear friend, Tom. And Tom, if you're watching, once again, I want to extend to you my warmest, warmest regards. So Tom uh, reached out to me and uh, he wa was wondering if it would be possible to meet at the local Barnes and Noble. And I said, sure, that would be great. So, so uh, we found some time and he, he, it was a, he took the time to come to this location and meet at the Barnes and Noble. And uh, after a lovely talk and uh, a, a meal and some coffee, where we were talking about cinema and uh, movie theaters and uh, favorite films from the 60s, etc. Uh, he also, among other things, made me this lovely gift. And I wanna share with you what this gift is. And voila, look what Tom, our dear friend, gifted to me. It is none other than Pasolini 101. Uh, so I am so, so thrilled about this. Thank you so much, Tom, for this lovely gift, this lovely gesture. And you even uh, went so far as to explain to me that you wanted to be sure that uh, there was no markings on the box because you had explained to me that Barnes & Noble oftentimes has this habit of tying security tags to box sets in a way that if tied too tightly, has uh, the possibility of creating dents where the, the string touches the edge of the box. And so you had made sure to ask the store where you made this purchase, you made sure to ask the store that, to have a, a, a set that did not have such tying around the edges. So I want to thank you so much for going that extra step uh, for purposes of this lovely gift to me. So I'm very thrilled about this. Uh, very thrilled indeed. This is one of the. This is, this is uh, this is a very exciting announcement when it was made by Criterion. So, I want to say thank you so much, uh, Tom, and and also once again let me extend my uh, warmest regards to John and to Chris. Uh, you you I was just uh, I was where I was in the in the food court or in the cafe wherever I was at the time, and you uh, each of you respectively came up to me. And you said, oh, are you Daisuke Beppo? I watch your YouTube channel. So I was so thrilled by that. I was, uh, I was uh, very excited and uh, I, I wanted to uh, just say thank you so much. And you took the time also to share with me some of your favorite movies, even though you were very busy at the time. You, you were very polite and, and uh, kind. And 
Oh, it's lovely, lovely. So, uh, so far, it's been a lovely adventure here uh, in the context of Barnes and Noble and Criterion and the lovely weather and, and the like. So, and uh, the food. I went to an In and Out Burger just now. So, uh, so, uh, and wow, well, what an experience that was as well. So, uh, so so far, it's been uh, very uh, overwhelming. It's been somewhat busy. I admit not being able to get my bearings straight. Uh, uh, for the most part, but I'm doing my best and I think uh, these encounters and these messages and uh, these visits uh, have certainly done a lot to uh, alleviate my, my, uh, my edginess and my nervousness and to make me feel uh, really welcomed. So thank you very much for that. So that is, and again, this is my, uh, my participation directly in the Barnes & Noble Criterion Sale for this July 2023. So that also is a big, big thrill. I want to say thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So that's not the only store I went to, the Barnes & Noble. Right? Those weren't the only stores I went to over the course of the last few days, or the last couple days. I went to one other store. I had some time, and so I drove some ways from the hotel, but it wasn't as far as I was anticipating. Also, it gave me the opportunity to try at my hand at the freeways here in, in and around Los Angeles, going into downtown Los Angeles area and going into Hollywood Boulevard area, Hollywood Boulevard, Sunset Boulevard, Santa Monica Boulevard, that area, and specifically Hollywood Boulevard because that's where they have this store, which is Amoeba Music. And here's the bag that I got, Amoeba, Amoeba Music. I went to Amoeba. It was my first time going to Amoeba after having heard so much about it, after having gotten a lot of comments and uh, um, private messages from a number of people, uh, friends and uh, followers of the channel over the years. And so here I was at last given the opportunity to go to Amoeba Music and that, there I did. And I did and it was going into the store. It was really uh, amazing seeing the, uh, uh, seeing the, well, let me, let me shoot, let me show you some of the uh, video that I took uh, in terms of the Amoeba, Amoeba Music Store. So uh, here's uh, some video that I took uh, in terms of that. So please have a look. Right? And so as you can see, it was just uh, just a lot of fun. I saw laser discs. I saw uh, a lot of uh, Blu-rays and DVDs and VHS tapes and out-of-print titles and rare collectibles, and music and uh, movies and books and uh, records and uh, poster art and other memorabilia. And it was really exciting. And my first time there, people were very friendly. The staff were very friendly. The person at the register uh, struck up a conversation with me about going to Japan. I had mentioned I was coming from Japan. He had said, oh, he's going to Japan next week. So that was a really cool coincidence. Uh, so everyone was so nice and it was a lovely atmosphere and decor. And I must share with you what I got. So I only had an hour there 
I wanted to spend more time there and, and really take my time to browse, but because I was so close to closing time of the store, I wasn't able to browse more, more than an hour. So uh, in that respect, I was browsing, browsing in the last, say, five minutes, I was a bit of an, an arrest to figure out what I was gonna get. I didn't wanna go empty handed. I thought I'm, I should get something just to, to commemorate this moment of being at Amoeba for the first time in my life. So I got a couple of things, or a few things. So the first is I got this mug, this yellow colored mug. It says Amoeba here, and there's amoeba.com there. So I can imagine drinking coffee uh, out of this yellow colored mug. So that's very exciting for me. So, so it, again, it's a lovely souvenir. Can't get this in Japan, at least. I don't know if you can. I don't know where, you, where I could go. So I was able to get that mug, very exciting. And, and they also uh, provide them in these wonderful paper bags. So, and I cherish these and use these uh, with care. Uh, so I got, I think, a second one in there too. Uh, it was crushed up into a ball and stuffed in there to, to create some cushioning. Uh, very thoughtful. And let me share with you what I got in this other bag here. And I will use this with uh, great care. Uh, and the bags are not off oh, the So uh, they gave me some complimentary stickers and a pin. Oh, that's so great. So. I have a pin, so this is a complimentary pin that they put in the bag. That's really nice. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. And look at that. There's a seal. Uh, look at that. It's in the shape of California, the state of California. I think a number, and it says all the, the places where the, they're located, the stores are located, and also a sticker, Amoeba music sticker. That's really cool. That's very cool. And I got two titles, and these are titles that uh, I was... Uh, you know, always maybe, well, I was always considering getting, but just for one reason or another was not able to. Uh, and I thought uh, these would be wonderful uh, because uh, they have a certain place in my heart. Uh, I might have mentioned uh, these films, or at least one of them, uh, or maybe in a live stream or, or a, a casual discussion somewhere, but it's these. So the Blu-rays, these are the Scream Factory Blu-rays of uh, and they were they were new so i was able to um, break them out of the seal uh, so here we go so this is this is it so silent night deadly night and silent night deadly night part two so i'm very excited for these uh, uh, you know i i might have mentioned how i was uh, i remember watching silent night deadly night on a vhs rental when it was initially released i was very young when I first saw it, and I, I probably, in retrospect, thinking back on it, I was probably way too young to have seen Silent Night, Deadly Night. How old was I? Oh, gosh, in that rental store, how old was I when I rented, watched Silent Night, Deadly Night? I don't know, like six or seven or so, I don't know. But uh, anyway, it, it, it uh, scared me very much, and it was a lot of things I didn't quite understand, and, uh, and there were some scenes, uh, um, very maybe infamous scenes, uh, um, uh, you know, the, like there's scenes involving like antlers and things. So, um, uh, so it was, uh, it was quite a, quite a, it made quite an impression on me. And I, I must say that it, it, uh, I, I'm kind of now, I'm, especially with this, this one, Silent Night, Deli, and I'm kind of nervous to watch it because I'm reminded of just how scared I was watching it as a kid when I watched it. And so it was, uh, uh, I mean, I look at back on it now with, uh, through my adult eyes uh, and I watch it, my grown up eyes, I suppose. But that's one of the great things about cinema is it, when you watch it, you know, watch a film, somehow or another, it just transports you, even if for a, a moment, it just transports you back to that, that first time you had seen it, whether it be a couple years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, in my case maybe almost 40 years ago um, when I'd seen this on VHS tape. And see, seeing it uh, uh, when I did at the time, the first time, really scared me. And so uh, it's really, it's uncanny just how, how uh, I mean, I can't remember, like I can't, I can't remember what I had for breakfast uh, two two days ago or three days ago. I can't remember what I had for breakfast, but I can remember the 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 time that I remember the sofa and the the, the, the pillows that were on the sofa, 
and just hiding behind the, the that sofa with the TV in the room. I remember that it was, uh, and it's such a long time ago, but I remember those details because uh, of this film, Silent Night, Deadly Night. And again, that's one of the great things about the cinema journey. That's what I really believe is very lovely about one's own cinema journey is that it's your own and it's personal and it becomes almost like a photo album of one's life. I don't know if you feel that way. I certainly do. It's still like a photo album. So um, uh, you can watch a film and of course relive it and uh, 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 experience it and, and fall in love with it or, or laugh with it or laugh at it or just have a good time with it or be moved by it or uh, have a consideration about it or be, be, uh, be conflicted about it or maybe even repulsed by it or just affected in one way or other by it emotionally and, and psychologically and maybe intellectually. Uh, but also it reminds, uh, while that is also going on, there's also this idea of, of it recalling all these memories associated with it upon a certain watch of it or a certain event or circumstances that uh, were, were there when those films uh, were uh, part of your uh, first viewing. So that certainly is true for me. I mean, it's true for this film, it's true for many, many other films. So, uh, that's kind of where I was in terms of my Abima music purchases. And so, uh, there we go. So that's uh, that's the state of things in terms of how I spent my first uh, couple days or so. I haven't gone to the movie theater yet. Uh, I admit to, I was trying to go see if I could go one of those films. It was a, uh, Oppenheimer or Barbie, but I was not able to go to a, one where uh, they had seats available at a time that was convenient for my, my schedule. So maybe I'll try at a, another time. But I'm here in the hotel room. In the hotel room also, uh, just behind the camera here, there's a, a TV on the wall. And uh, you can turn on the TV and it, it has a hotel uh, television or internet t TV. And one of the things you can watch for free here in the hotel that I'm saying is Showtime. And uh, so I went, oh, I wonder if, since I can watch Showtime for free, I wonder if I can watch Twin Peaks The Return. So I, I went, went to the search thing and I typed in, or you know, you had the, 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 when you push search, you have to use the remote control. You have to use the remote control to then, then you know, use the down arrow, up arrow, and right, left arrows to, to, to type on the screen keyboard there. So it's a little bit inconvenient, but it's okay. Let's go like T, uh, W, uh, I, and you're always hoping that you just TWI will be enough for it to prompt twin or something, but it didn't quite do it. So I had to go all the way to N, T W I N. And lo and behold, it, it came up with twin. So I clicked on the word twin and it came up with Twin Peaks The Return. So it was exciting. So I have been, while, while I have not been uh, out and about uh, or those times, uh, or maybe I'm up late at night because of jet lag uh, and I can't go to sleep or I'm, I'm in my hotel for one reason or another, I'll put on Twin Peaks The Return. And my goodness, so that is just rounding out my first uh, couple days or so here. So it's, it's, uh, it's a, a wonderful, lovely mismatch of Barnes & Noble, Amoeba, uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night, uh, Pasolini, uh, After Hours, uh, Criterion titles, and Twin Peaks The Return, as well as many other things as well. I, I, um, uh, I had um, Arizona uh, green tea or something, and they had like cucumber flavor, which was uh, mind-boggling. It wasn't cucumber flavor, I forget, I, uh, but I'm, I'm missing some of these details. But And I also got a Twix bar, it was great. It was one of those things where it had four of them in it. And uh, some, I got a bagel and also drinking a lot of water, uh, but uh, um, really uh, just... Just a, a wonderful thing. I'm just trying to drive around to kind of get my bearings as to this area and the like. So all in all, a, a wonderful time. So thank you very much to all who have welcomed me uh, so with such a friendly warmth. And uh, just uh, I'm, I c consider myself very fortunate, very lucky, and totally not deserving of such warmth and generosity. Uh, so, uh, but... Now, that being said, you still, all the same, are so willing to uh, show me this kindness and generosity. And I am deeply, deeply uh, moved, and I am forever grateful. So thank you very much for making these first couple of days uh, very, very uh, relaxed and very warm indeed. 
Thank you so much indeed, my dear friends. But uh, let us continue the conversations going forward. Uh, of course we will, of course we will. If you want to have more talks with me, I certainly would love to have more talks with you. And so, uh, and then just going forward to just, as I get a little bit more settled down, I'll try to pick up those film discussions that we were having before about Twin Peaks, The Missing Pieces, and I'm watching The Return again, so I suppose that means I have to do The Return. I'm now uh, infinitely uh, pumped and excited for those discussions. So, uh, and then also picking up the Criterion uh, new release discussions. Again, I'm, I'm, I have to talk about rules of the game and time bandits and then um, uh, the servant, medicine for melancholy, uh, watermelon woman, after hours, breathless. Uh, Pasolini set, also the, the Western set, which I have to get uh, elsewhere. Also just watching uh, some other titles too. And also the Cronenberg film discussions, the, uh, the Angelopoulos film discussions, the Brian De Palma film discussions. Oh, I'm particularly excited about Brian De Palma film discussions because we're almost at the point where we can talk about the film Body Double. It has a nice LA connection. Uh, so, wow, very excited indeed. Really, really exciting. So, um, and yes, yes, this is the sort of thing... Uh, I love Tokyo, don't get me wrong. I really love Tokyo. I love Japan. And uh, I'm, I'm, I am, I must admit, feeling uh, excited on the one hand for being here, but also part of me still feels a little bit sad and a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, uh, maybe longing or, or aching uh, to go to Japan uh, again. Uh, I really love uh, Tokyo and the place that we were in. Uh, but, but, uh, uh, you know, that is, I think, to be expected when one goes to a new place. Uh, so uh, that's, nothing, that's not a knock against the new place at all. It's just, I think, just that's just the natural way of things. And that's also my way to say that while I still have some of those feelings of, of uh, sadness, I am very also uh, very excited and very happy for uh, where I am right now. Uh, it feels like uh, I, I have this way of now re-experiencing cinema uh, that I thought I could only just imagine or could just be part of my dreams, but now it seems like uh, the dreams are slowly becoming a type of reality. So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for that. And let us continue our discussions going forward. I'll try to make more videos as I can. Uh, but in the meantime, my dear friends, please be happy and healthy and well. And please keep on watching a lot of great, 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 great movies. Let me know anytime if you want to share with me some of those films that you saw. Anything at all, my dear friends, anything at all. Uh, your, your recommendations are like, like treasure for me. So uh, I look forward to hearing from you anytime. So until the next one or the next video, my dear friends, stay strong, stay safe, and cheers.